Okay, so like I alluded to, we're going to do another tour of the camper today because it's been, I think, two years since we did the first one. We've added a few things, and I have several questions that a lot of you continue to ask me that I thought maybe I would address in this video. So let's start with some of the basics. So remember, this is a removable camper pod that I built separate from the trailer. This could go on any 5x10 trailer, and for that matter, it could go on any larger trailer. If you say you wanted to put this on a larger trailer, and maybe take a four-wheeler or a side-by-side -side with you, you could do that. But I added the toolbox to give us a little bit more storage. I've got some wheel chocks in here. We put our cooking sticks in here, some straps, bug spray, just a kind of a catch-all, really. You can see it's not very organized, but definitely a, a useful space. Now, in the future, if I were going to do this again, or maybe in the future, I would either get a larger box here or maybe a tongue box that's shaped the size of the tongue something with maybe a little bit more space but this is pretty functional for us okay so the next thing that we covered last time but i'll cover again are these awnings we put one of these awnings on each side and it's super simple they roll out they velcro up in a, a nice nesting position up here they roll out and just extendable aluminum poles and what i don't have on here are tie downs that go there's one tie down for each corner and they just expand the living area i think they're maybe six and a half feet out from the camper by eight feet long now the camper pod is 10 feet long so it doesn't quite go the whole way but it covers the door it covers our our table and our cooking area it gives us a nice place to sit or store some gear to keep it out of the sun and out of the rain the one modification that I don't know if I covered in the last video is I did have to relocate the, the spare tire on this trailer. A lot of utility trailers will have the spare either mounted on the front or in this case it was mounted on the side directly in front of this access door. I tell you this because if you guys want to build your own version of this you may have to come up with some creative ideas to move your spare tire. Coming around to the back you see a large access door in the back. Some of the teardrops that you can either buy or you see folks build have a full-blown kitchen out the back. And Monica and I chose not to do a full-blown kitchen, more of a storage area. We do have a refrigerator and some storage for utensils and pots and pans. You can see we use just a cardboard box. It doesn't have to be fancy to be functional. We made a cubby down here with enough space for a cooler. We have a space underneath here that fits our cooking stove, which you've seen on my other table over there. Now this camper pod does have power, so there is a light in here in the back galley area. And there's power throughout, and I'll show you that as we continue the tour. Okay, so before we keep going, this is one of the things that I get asked quite frequently is, what do I have the outside finished with? And once I tell you what it is, it's truck bed liner. And people ask me, how is it holding up? So if Monica can come in here with the camera, you'll see this rough texture of a truck bed liner. You can kind of see a little bit of the seam of the plywood right here as it didn't line up perfectly, but it's, it's all sealed and it's, all, it's holding up really well. Now I will say that I do store this inside over the winter and in the off season, but for the most part, I haven't had anything flake off or any issues with leaking, knock on wood. Um, but the process here was a plywood base, then I used an exterior grade paint primer on the whole unit, followed by this Raptor liner, multiple layers of this Raptor liner, and it's held up really well. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is these tables. So the last video, and again, this is two years ago. We were using an outdoor kitchen setup that was a freestanding, had a couple shelves, and we would put our cook stove on it. The problem is when you get to a campsite, a lot of times you'll have to level your camper. Now on this camper, we use blocks under the tires and the jack up front that give us three points of contact and we can level the camper. If the site is not level, we found that it was really hard to get our tables to be level. So. I created this little custom design here, which I am pretty proud of. This is a four foot long piece of quarter inch plywood with just some one by framing in here. 
The way that this goes on is pretty unique. It attaches to my trailer frame and it just sits on there. Now, please be kind for my welding job here. I just kind of threw this thing together, but I used this structural angle bracing that's fairly lightweight. And I used a two by two tubing that I cut the bottom out of. And all these do is sit, and I should mention I use a piece of rubber just to kind of grip everything into place. And it sits, it just sits there like that. And I don't attach these in any other way other than just sitting them there. And when I put this thing together, if my trailer is level, then I know my table will be level every time. And it is great. Another advantage, and we'll actually walk over back to the other side to show you this, tucking the table up to the side of the camper allowed me to use this space above the fender and above the spare tire and still be able to stand here without taking up all of my awning space. It really worked out well. We don't normally do this, but it is possible to take the table from the other side and bring it here, but we can make an eight foot long table here. So in the event that maybe we were feeding a bunch of people and we had all of our food lined up almost like a buffet line, we could do a whole line here. Works out really well. Okay, so now we're on the inside of the cabin sleeping area. Starting in the front, I kept this very, very simple and utilitarian. You'll see hooks on the front for hats, bags, backpacks. You'll also see a permanently affixed shelf on the front. That shelf serves multiple functions. First of all, it is part of the structure of the front of the trailer. It is also our main storage shelf that we can access everything on that shelf from the outside without having to climb in. You'll see some receptacles up there also. As we circle around for the ceiling area, we've got this tongue and groove pine up here that looks real nice. I have lots of lights in here. I put two more receptacles in the back corners. I'll also mention that the interior is finished off with a quarter inch plywood. So we have three quarter inch on the outside, quarter inch on the inside. There is one by pine in between with three quarters of an inch of foam insulation all the way around this sleeping quarters. Behind me, you're gonna notice an overhead cubby storage area. And this cubby storage area is above the kitchen area where the refrigerator is at, kind of that dead space up there. We use this to store pillows and blankets and some of our I guess some of the things that Monica and I use while we're sleeping in here that we might not want to use during the day. Blankets, pillows, some of our clothing can be kind of tucked up in here. This thing closes up and we create a condition that you see right now where we have a couch in here. And I'm sitting in the middle, but if I scoot over, we can easily sit two of us in here and have a ton of room in here to change clothes or get in out of the rain, anything like that. Seen how this trifold mattress, this is a six inch thick trifold mattress. This is another one of the questions that we get quite frequently is what do we use for a mattress and where did I get it? I bought it on Amazon and we'll put a link to that in the description of this video. But this is a trifold, which means all I've got to do to make this into a bed is fold it out like this. And we've got a full size mattress here. How tall are you? I'm six foot one, and there's plenty of room, as you can see on the back side, for me to be able to lay in here without any issues. I guess I should have kept the pillow out, hey, babe? Yeah. <laughs> so, the memory foam makes for a very, very comfortable. And this is the main reason that we wanted to do this camper, because Monica and I were on an air mattress before in the tent. You remember, babe? Yep. And 
now we get to be on some memory foam. Oh man, much more comfortable. So one last thing that I'll mention before we go back to the outside is I did add this powered vent fan in here and this on that will blow air in or out and it has three different speeds. The only thing that I did notice about this is it is quite loud, which is good and bad. It's good because if you happen to be in a campground where there's some other people and they may be making some noise after hours, this thing kind of drowns out the sound. Um, and it also can be bad if you don't want that sound drowning. Uh, your kids are in the tent. Because your kids are in the tent, you might want to be listening, then you may not want to run that fan. So what we do is sometimes we'll take a smaller fan. This is a little unscripted here, but we'll use just a very simple small fan, plug it into the receptacle. And we can set this thing on the shelf. And it is considerably quieter, but you still get a little bit of air movement. Okay, so a quick Q&A session. Monica's got a list of some of the topics that I get asked about frequently. What's first on that list? Uh, Raptor liner. Yes, so the Raptor liner we talked about a little bit. That is the exterior coating. It is holding up very well. I would recommend, if you were going to do this, to make sure that you get at least two, maybe three, full coverage coats of Raptor liner. I think I have two and then some, <laughs> and it worked well. I'd probably feel more comfortable with three. What's next, babe? Cables. Oh, cables. So I did not cover this in the video, but the way that I attach this camper pod to the trailer is those quarter inch cables that you videoed me the other day. I have a, a skids, four by six skids on the bottom of the camper and with a hole drilled through them. And I run a cable underneath the frame of the trailer and I use turnbuckles underneath there. There's two cables, two turnbuckles. And what that does is kind of captures the frame of the trailer, the whole sturdy frame of the trailer with a steel cable. Now, I've gotten <laughs> some pretty rough comments, actually, from people telling me that it's going to fall off and I'm going to kill somebody and all this sort of stuff. So I can tell you, so far we've had this from the middle part of Michigan all the way up to the northern, to the UP and back. We've had it to Florida and back once, yeah, for baseball last year. Mm -hmm. We've had it all over the place. This year, we plan on taking it out to... Washington, D.C., and yep. then we're going to take it to New York, not New Up, York upstate City. New York. Yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, Finger Lakes area. Yep. We're going to take it out to all the way out to the Atlantic, actually. We're going to go to yeah, that. Yeah, we're going go to go to Assateague Island. Hopefully, I said it right. Yeah. So, my point is, I've never had this shift back and forth on me. I have no problem with it. I would prefer this attachment method over say screws through the decking because the decking on these trailers is only attached with some sheet metal screws. It's just not sturdy. If I had to put on an attachment method where I run bolts under the bottom, then you have an alignment issue where you have to align that thing up perfectly every single time, which could be done, I'll admit, but this seems to work fine. What's next, kiddo? Mattress. The mattress we covered. So you'll find a link to that mattress and some of these other products that you've seen here in the description of this video at our Amazon store. You guys, go check that out and click on the link, link in this description and it'll help us out also. Lights. Lights. So when I was sitting inside the camper, there's we have four lights on the inside there. What do we have to do to the one? We had to dim it because it was just too bright in there. Yeah. So daylight time, we go in there and we turn a couple lights on and you say to yourself, oh, there's a nice amount of light in here. When it's dark outside and you turn one of those four lights on, there is more light than you'll ever need inside of there. <laughs> so we really only use one light at a time. And one of the four 
when she said we dimmed it, we had to take some painter's tape and some masking tape and just kind of cover it up so it wasn't so bright. So if I was going to do this again, I would put one light on the interior, but I would put a dimmable light where it would be on a rheostat knob where you could actually dim the light down or turn it up, but I would only have one light on the inside. Well, it cost. Cost is a tricky question because when did we build this? Uh, you built it during the COVID time. So, 2020. Yeah, I mean, wood was ridiculous. So in 2020, the cost of lumber skyrocketed. So when I tell you the cost that I have into this, uh, I think I estimated in the comments of one of the TikTok videos around $4,000. I think it was closer to probably $5,000. Now I think you could probably do this a little bit cheaper. So it depends on your method of construction. Like I said, maybe I mentioned, maybe I didn't. The exterior is three-quarter inch plywood, but it is a single custom-ordered sheet, 10 feet long, 5 feet wide. So the overall dimensions of the pod, 5 feet wide, 5 feet tall, 10 feet long. I eliminated some seams in the build by using those custom-ordered larger sheets of plywood. I probably could have saved several hundred dollars by using smaller plywood and just having seams. And I, I think in hindsight that would have probably been fine, uh, but this is the way that, that we went. So if you're going to build one of these uh, considerably fancier than this, I mean, people could have ten, fifteen thousand dollars oh, in yeah, one of you these could do a lot. <laughs> with, with a, a full kitchen fixtures and everything in the back. We tried to stay as simple as possible, as yeah, functional as possible and try to keep the cost down. Uh, your, the last one is weight. Weight is a very common question that I get also. So I will tell everyone that this camper pod on my trailer is heavier than almost every teardrop that you're going to find. There's several reasons for that. Number one, and I don't want to offend anybody, but this is built heavier duty and more sturdy than any teardrop that you're going to find out there available for sale and probably anything that anybody's building out there. I didn't really take weight into consideration a whole lot when I built this because we pull it with our half ton Ford pickup truck. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that has a towing capacity of seven, eight, 9,000 pounds. I mean, it, it's not a big deal for us. The only concern was whether the trailer could handle the weight. But to answer the question, I did take it over to some cat scales last year and I did have it weighed. So with the trailer and the camper pod loaded up with basic gear, so not all of our gear, but basic gear, it came in at 2,900 pounds. Now again, most of these teardrops, I don't know if you know this, but most of the teardrops are maybe 1,500 pounds. Mm. So we're almost twice the weight of one of those. We have a trailer with a 3,000 pound axle or a 3,500 pound axle. Uh, we've never had an issue with anything. I check the bearing temperature frequently and, you know, tire pressure. I don't have any issues with this thing going down the road or hauling our gear. Something that I didn't mention is there is a hitch receiver on the back of here. So we'll add bicycles on the back. We got our food in the back. We got typically in the cabin area. What are we loading up for the kids? Clothes? Their clothes, their sleeping bags, their tent because they have a tent. A lot of times we'll bring two tents, actually, yeah. in case one gets damaged or wet. Yeah, or our site's just not big enough for a large tent. Yeah. Um, Shoes, hats, clothes, uh, everything that we need. Everybody's chairs, coolers. And we had one this... truck where the back end of the truck had, we had the canoe on the top of the truck and two kayaks in the back end as well. <laughs> Canoes, kayaks, bikes, we, we load the whole thing up, which is why we usually end up towing this with, the pickup instead of the jeep if it was just the two of us maybe we would take it on my wrangler that you see in this video uh, but most of the time we take my wife's pickup truck because it hauls all of us easier and has a lot more storage capacity for everything my anything? truck's more awesome than your jeep <laughs> <laughs> yeah anything else on your list nope that was it wait was the last one all right Okay, so that's going to do it for this tour of the camper. I hope I answered some questions that everybody had, and hopefully you enjoyed the, the build. Remember, the entire build for this camper series is actually on this YouTube channel. If you look under playlists, you're going to find all the camper videos listed in that playlist. 
You'll also find other playlists of things that we do, such as, but not limited to. I put her on the spot. Oh, what? There's, <laughs> there's tractor videos. There's oh. outdoor living videos. There is a full build series for building a remote cabin on this property, straight back there in our woods. Sawmill videos. Sawmill videos. There's, there's quite a few things that we do that we consider our American dream that we're living. And we love it. And we love sharing it with you guys. So I appreciate everybody watching. And stick around. More interesting content to come. Thanks for watching.